Hey everybody, Chris State here. I'm so excited today to share with you guys how to actually get your website up and online, hosted so that way everyone in the world can see it. In the last episode, we took the time to use Hugo and set up our website so that way we can separate our, our content from our theme. And I want to use that same methodical approach in today's episode. I want to talk about kind of the concepts we're going to use before we get into actually doing it. As you, If we get into the first thing, I want to make sure that our website can be able to be updated over time. I want to make sure that if we make changes to the website, we can revert back in case we mess up. Or if we add stuff to the website, we can change it around the way we want to. I also want to make sure that we're able to set up things like forms. So that way we can actually have people input things into the website. I want to make, make sure that we can possibly do split testing to where some of your users go to a site as one version and some of them go to a site as a different version. I want to make sure we have those abilities, but the most importantly, I want to make sure that we have the control over our website. Well, I'm going to separate this episode here, not into two different videos, but into kind of two different segments. The first one is separating it into getting our code online, getting that data online, and the second one's going to be actually setting it up on a server. So let's go ahead and get into that first part. You're going to have to have a GitHub account for this, so go ahead and create one if you don't, but if you if you don't, they're easy, they're free to make, they're free to use, super awesome. What we're going to do here is we're going to go to github.com. And up at this top top right of the uh, page, we're going to click on the plus button. I'm going to click on new repository. Now, this since this is my portfolio website, I'm going to name this portfolio website, right? And then to say this is my professional portfolio website. And, you know, I'll put example. Because this is my example. I don't want other people to see this. This isn't my real portfolio website. And I want to leave this as public. And this is important because when it comes to our hosting, they require that if you are hosting using a private repository, you're going to have to pay for it. And I'm trying to keep this as cheap as possible and as open as possible. And honestly, this is a website. Things that anybody else in the world can see. So why hide the code if you're, all, if you're going to show them the interface to it anyways? Next, I'm just going to add this MIT license. You guys can read up on that by clicking this I, but I typically just add that to all my websites for now. I'll get into, I'll talk about maybe at a different point, your licensing and stuff like that, but I'm going to click Create Repository. So what did we do here? What did we create? Well, in a future video, what, I, what I'll go through is what a, what a Git repository is, but what we did here is, is on, a, on, a, on a website, on a service that will actually house your Git repositories and back them up and keep them updated and publicly available. We actually created a repository online, but this isn't on my computer yet, and I don't have any code in there. So how do we how do we get that? Well, the easiest thing that I do, and it's probably maybe not the best, but it's what works for me, is I actually just copy this repository locally, copy my code into that, and then push it back up to the web. So we're going to do that. And the easiest way I do that is you can do it through command line, you can do it through terminal, but you can actually download something called GitHub Desktop. So I'm going to type in GitHub Desktop. And if we see, you can see there's a download there. You can click download, and when it gets done installing, I'll open mine up real quick here. And you can see it'll open up something like this. You might have to log into your Git, your GitHub account, so that way you can view it. But you should see a page like this. And what we want to do is we actually, on this, on this right side, we want to clone a repository. And look at this. It pops up with a list of all the repositories already in your account. So I want to go to my portfolio website, right? So uh, portfolio, right there it is. I typed in portfolio, but... That's okay. That's just, just an example. So it, you can see it's going to create this path on my desktop. And I'm going to click clone. Now, if I pull this folder up, I'll pull this up on my other monitor here. And you can see that I have my portfolio website. And I'm going to open up our website that we created in the last video. I'm going to open up that folder here. And what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to copy all this code. So I'm going to hit Command C. And I'm going to go over here and just hit Command V. It's saying I already have a license, and I'll just click Replace. And you can see now that I have all this code in there, right? But we're not done yet. We have a couple of things to set up and a couple of things to get situated before we get going. So the first thing we want to do is we want to actually go to our um, GitHub desktop. And you can see, well, real quick, let's go back to the website, right? Let's, let's go back to here and refresh. Does it show up in here? We added it. Why isn't it there? Well, it's because we haven't actually pushed it anywhere. We haven't actually committed to the database. So you can see it automatically found that there's eight new changes to our GitHub repository. And I'm going to type in a comment. I'm going to say initial, um, you know, commit. And I'm going to click commit to master. I'm going to select all of these. I'm going to click commit to master. 
And what this is going to do is this is actually going to take all of my code and it's going to commit that to our Git repository, not on the website, but our local one. And what this means is that it actually, because it's our initial one, it actually means everything. But as you change items over time, if you change a, a text, you know, if you change some text or you add a file here or put a picture there, it'll only track the changes. So that way, as you progress through your website and if you mess up or if you add something wrong or you add something new, you can revert back. The next thing you want to do to actually get it up there is click this push to origin and it's going to process and do all this crazy stuff and shoot it up and it's going to go up to GitHub. And if you go back to the website and you click refresh, boom, there it is. But why don't we have our themes folder? You can see over here, you can see our themes is there, but we're going to fix why we don't have a themes folder. So I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to close out a GitHub desktop. I'm done with this. Oh, wait, before we do, look at that. What is that right there? Is that the themes? Can we click on that? Can we commit that? So if I do that, if I say commit, right, and I click commit to master, what happens? We get a code error. And this is because GitHub Desktop isn't used to working with Hugo, isn't worse to, used to working with that. So I'm actually going to kill it. And what we're going to do is we're going we're gonna to go back to our portfolio website on our desktop. And I'm just going to right click on this and click new terminal. And I'm just going to type in code, period. So that way it opens up Visual Studio Code right to that folder, a little, little side tip in case you guys didn't know that. So now we've opened up Visual Studio Code, you can see, uh, let's go ahead and close out all these release notes. You can see that it has all of our data here, all of our, you know, all of our licenses and stuff, and our themes are there, right? Look, if we go to the, if we go to the terminal down here and we type in Hugo server, right? And then we go to the, we go to that URL, it should pop up, right? Let me pull up my browser. Local. Look, there's our awesome website again, right there. Boom. It shows up, but why? Why isn't our themes, you know, why, why didn't our themes show up on GitHub? Well, we need to actually do something. We need to actually add a Git module. We need to add a sub module. And it's very easy to do. So what we're going to do, do is go down here and we're going to kill this. And what we're going to do is we're going to type in inside terminal. And you can do this in terminal here or you can do this in, in terminal here. It doesn't matter. I'm going to use Visual Studio Code from now on. But I'm going to type in touch and type in dot git modules. And what that's going to do is that's actually going to create a file called git modules right here. Then, when we go back to our, um, sorry, we're going to actually go back to the website. So I'm going to open up here, and I'm actually going to open up the Git. I'm going to open up the Git repository to our theme. So what's our theme again? So if you go to GitHub, and we type in Casper two, and you can see it's right here, you you ween Casper two, and this is our theme. This is what we need to tell it what we're using, and I'll explain why here in a second why we're going to be doing this. But let's just Let's just push it through, right? Let's just get it up. So in order to do this, we actually need to go back to that git that git modules file and we need to add some we need to add some text. We need to add some blurbs here. So I'm pulling up a, a little um, a little thing here on my other screen just so I can make sure I don't mistype it. And I'm I'm just gonna copy and paste it here, but I'll walk you guys through it so that way it's not confusing. So you can see here you're adding a, a sub module and you're gonna name it themes Casper 2. You're telling it's you're telling it here where it's at, which is inside that that themes folder. You can see right here that's where it's at, right? And then you can tell it the URL when this is the actual URL to the repository where it's at. I'm gonna go ahead and save this file, and I'm gonna click here. And I'm actually gonna say I'm actually gonna say um, added sub module, right? And I'm gonna commit this, and I'm gonna I'm gonna push it right there, right? And then I'm actually going to click right here on this on these three dots, and I'm going to click sync. And what this is going to do is it's going to sync both the local and the server copies of my repository. And if I go back to GitHub and I refresh this page, oh there we go. You can see right there's our Git modules uh, file, and inside there is it shows us where that's at. But it also has this themes folder right there. Boom. And look at this. Now you'll notice that this isn't actually a file. If you click on this, this is actually a link to that repository that Git repository, which is which is strange. Why, why is that a link? Why is it not a file? Well, here's why. When you update your site, when you change your content, when you change your layout, you want your Git repository to reflect that. But every time that this guy or you know whoever, whoever theme you're using changes that theme, if you're helping him build it or if it's built by a, a community or just a sole individual, when they update it, you want your website to be updated with it. Now you're able to act, now let's say they make a breaking change. 
you can actually lock it to the older version. But if they're just updating it and they're adding features and they're fixing bugs, you don't want your site to be held back by the fact that you got to go in there and update the files every time. So instead of actually saying, hey, I'm just going to copy the files over, what you do instead is you put a reference, you put a symbolic link to that GitHub repository. That way the host knows when we go to set up hosting, it says download your content and download their theme. And that way it keeps them updated on time. And, and you know, it, it, it it makes it very much easier to work with, right? So that's why we added that. Now, there's one other thing that I want to make sure that we, we we pay attention to before we do this because it's actually a breaking change that we can make. I'm going to go back to Visual Studio Code and I'm going to go back to the file browser here and I'm going to click on this configurator. Up at the top, you should have a base URL. It's very, very important that you erase this and make it blank. I have found, I don't know if it's with every theme, but with all the themes I've worked with, if this is not blank, what happens typically is it actually it actually causes your theme not to be used. Now, you want to leave it blank for now, but when we go to set up our URL, when we go to actually buy a domain and set it up, we're going to change it to that. But for now, if you, if you don't leave it blank, it's actually going to make breaking changes to our website. What we're going to do now is we're going to get into the next portion of this video where we actually go through and host our website on a hosting service. All right, so you can see I have netliffy.com up. This is what we're gonna to use to host our website. This is the, the server that we're gonna use, the service that we're gonna to use to actually host and run our website. And I chose this as a very, um, I, I've, I've spent a lot, a long time, years, um, using different services, using different uh, platforms. And I've come up with, this is the best one. I, I've tried. I've tried them all. I've tried, you know, setting up my own server, rolling it from scratch, and managing everything. I've tried the all-in-one solution that says, "Give us your files and we'll do it for you," but that takes away all your control. And this right here is the perfect balance between control and simplicity. Not only that, but because we are hosting it publicly and we have our code publicly available, we can do it for free. Netliffy here allows us to do a couple of things, and I'm and just real quick. I'm not getting sponsored by them. I'm not getting paid by them. In case any of you guys are wondering, it's, this is literally just my personal uh, preference, preference and feelings towards this website. Netliffy themselves, they don't, they don't, they, they have, they have features and things that other websites don't give you, and it's very easy to set up and very free. So I'm going to go ahead and click login, and what's really awesome here is it allows you to log in using your GitHub account. I've logged in before, so it just automatically update, logged in here for me, and you can see I have six sites here, seven sites here, and we're going to create a new one here. So I'm going to click on new site from Git. And there's three steps we have to follow. There's the connect to a Git provider, pick a repository, and then we set up our build options and it can deploy. Super easy and super simple. So I'm gonna click on GitHub here right here. They can also sync with Git Labs and Bitbucket, but I'm gonna click on GitHub and I'm just gonna go to my portfolio website. So I'm gonna click on portfolio website right here. And we're gonna we're gonna deploy off the master branch. We only have one branch right now. We might get into more branches at a different time if that comes up, but we're going to deploy off the master branch. And then we need to build command. So just like how we would run Hugo server on our desktop or run Hugo to build the site, we need to tell them what they're going to do and they're going to use Hugo. And then we want to push to a public uh, published directory, which by default, Hugo goes to public. So we're going to leave the default one. Now we need to show some advanced build settings. Not that we're going to get super technical here, but all we need to do is tell NetLiffy what version of Hugo we're going to be using. And as of today, as of this video, the most up-to-date Hugo version, as you can see, I'm typing in Hugo underscore version, all uppercase, is 0.38.1. This is the most up-to-date version. This tells, this tells NetLiffy when they go to build your site what version of Hugo to download. And let's say a newer version comes out and you haven't updated this setting, it's not going to go ahead and update for you. So that way, if Hugo ends up updating their service or whatever that, you can wait until you've tested it locally before you change it on your server. Now I'm going to click deploy site. And what this is going to do is NetLiffy is connected to your GitHub account. It's going to go to that repository. It's going to copy all that code over. It's going to download it. It's going to bring it here and it's going to download Node and NPM and it's going to download Hugo and it's going to process this site and put it up for public viewing. You can see right here, if you click on deploys on this top bar, you can see right now it's processing your website. And if you click on here, you can actually see exactly what the, the terminal or the command prompt or the server is, is outputting here. And you can see that right here, the site is live. So how do we view this? How do we see this? You can click preview deploy. And boom, look at that. Our site is ready to go. But wait, what? 
how do we how do we share this with our friends? How do we go to you know mine would be chrisstate.com. How how do we do this? How do we show them what it is? Well, how we do this, how we show them what this is, is we give them the URL. But what is the URL? Well, if we go back to NetLiffy here and we click on deploys, you can see right here it's being hosted at HTTPS heuristic Bartic 6B, this weird dot net liffy.com. It's this weird URL, right? So you click on that and you could share that with your friends, but that's not what we want. We want a custom URL. Now we're not ready to set up a custom URL yet because we need to actually purchase a custom URL, which we're going to do in the next video. But there's just something I want to show you guys real quick that is the most awesome and most powerful feature here. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pull up Visual Studio Code again. And if we view our website, let's go back real quick and look at our website. So we click that. Let's say we wanted to change and we wanted to, uh, let's say we wanted to add a post or let's say we wanted to, um, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't add a project yet. Let's say we wanted to go into here and, and edit this, um, my first post. Let's, let's change that to my awesome first post, right? So what I'll do is I'll go into here and I'll go into Visual Studio Code and I'll go into, um, content, my first post, and I'll change the title to my awesome first post. I'll save this, right? So I'll click save, and then it automatically, Visual Studio Code will detect that change, right? Look, you changed it, and I'll say changed post title. This doesn't need to be anything official, just notes to yourself. Click that, and then click push. And if we go back to the website, if we go back to NetLiffy, I'm going to close out of here, and we go back to deploys. You can see that it automatically already detected our change on GitHub using commit 94A5D54. And it's going through, and it's building the entire website again, and it says it's live, and you click preview deploy, and look at that. My awesome first post. It's already updated, and it's already synced. So as you can see, what we did today is we set up a GitHub repository. We put our website on there. We set up our website, and we put that on there. And then we linked NetLiffy to follow that GitHub repository to where as we update that GitHub repository, NetLiffy will download and track that. As we go through these series of videos, I will show you the other features such as functions, forms, split testing, identity, and settings. But other than that, I think we're good. I think we're ready to go. Thanks for watching this video. If you have any comments or questions or anything, put them down below. I, I, I love reading your guys' questions and, and writing back, even if it's just a random question about anything, I can answer it. Um, but I want to know what you guys want to learn. Put down there, please. What what do you guys want to learn? What do you guys want to know? Because I, I love to share, I love to teach, and I just want to share with you guys. So if you like this video, just go ahead and leave a like on it, and I'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.